Do you find that it's incredibly hard to wake up? All the time. Just to get out of bed is a big obstacle. That It's like a Herculean <laughs> feat. Yeah. Um. Even when you you'd think you've had enough sleep, like on days off where it's like, I fell asleep on the couch for like, you know, like seven or eight, woke up at like midnight, went to bed, still didn't wake up until like seven or eight, but still just like, I can't do it. I can sleep for 15 hours straight and I'm just dead. It seems like the more I sleep, the worse I feel. Yeah. But also, the less I sleep, the worse (laughs) I feel. (laughs) I I can't tell you the last time in like 10 years where I woke up refreshed. Yeah. Yeah, I had a good night's sleep. No. No, it's just a horror show. That's my whole life now. It's just a a walking dead horror show. I'm just constantly in the state of trying not to fall asleep. It's even like having good sleep. Like, I have good sleep. It's not like I'm having like nightmare riddled th- sweat dreams and stuff like that like no like i could like my head could hit the pillow and i could be dead to the ward for like you said like 15 hours <laughs> but as soon as i open my eyes it's just like i can't why I, I don't know what's going on it's horrible and the only time like all day i'll just want to sleep i'm driving i'm falling asleep i play a game i'm falling asleep watch a tv playing on my phone reading writing falling asleep as soon as it's time for bed though you're wired my brain's like you don't want to sleep <laughs> You want to think about every awful thing you did in the third grade. Like, what? So it's just it's just an endless cycle of being tired and then not wanting to sleep. And then when you finally fall asleep, you wake up and it's like you weren't sleeping at all and you feel like shit. It's a very fun cycle. I'm not a big fan of being an adult anymore. <laughs> yeah, the whole adulting thing is a little... When we were kids, we looked at adults like they know what the fuck they're doing. We listened to them. Yeah. No. Don't listen to us. We don't know what we're doing. Though I do, like, I I remember that, but I also, even at a younger age, coming to realize that a lot of adults don't know, but you you still just had to listen to them because they were adults. I was Dennis the Menace. I was always scamming adults. (laughs) I was always, like, manipulating them to do my bidding. So I never, ever thought adults were smart. No. That also is because my mom used to make us go to church all the time. And I realized church people will believe anything, anything, anything. You'll believe any fucking thing. I mean, if you believe Adam and Eve were real when they were created from clay and Eve from a rib, you believe anything then. There was a flood. You could be a sucker. You could be a grade A sucker. And we can guys like us and Joel Olstein Ro- could manipulate <laughs> you out of your money. Rube. They could be rubes. They could be rubes. Ooh, that's a harsh one. You know, we're in a weird time period because it used to be if you made fun of religion, you were canceled. But now that's like the only thing you can make fun of. Ever notice that? I mean, the religious people obviously are going to shit on you, but that's like the marginalized group now. It's like if you're a Christian, people are going to make fun of you. Yeah. But it used to be the opposite. Like in the 50s, if you were a Christian, you were the asshole that made fun of everybody else. So we we went back. Not backwards. uh, I think the Diddlin had a lot to do with that. The (laughs) Diddlin did not help. Catholics, they can't like say anything about anything. No, like I always just like I feel bad for like the good priests. Yeah, like because there has to be some of them. Like there's good cops. There's yeah, some. <laughs> yeah, but they just they just bound. overshadowed by yeah. the awful ones. Here's what I say, Spencer, because like Catholics are super against abortion. Yeah, that's like their main thing. A part of me, even at a young age, was like, is that just so they could get some more diddling material <laughs> like yeah if, if you you know more kids you force yeah exactly more kids like that's gross right. i'm glad my mom never made us do that kind of church we were like the freewheeling christian church where it's just like hey i'm a pastor but i you know i don't wear a tie today yeah like, you know one of them them deals but i, I wish she got into a cult that would have been kind of cool i always like wanted- one of those desert cults I always wanted to go to one of like the like the serpent thing, you know, with like the people with the snakes and stuff. Yeah, just because I feel like just be in the back of the crowd, like you know, and just just to watch it. I figured that'd be like a good show. I wish I was born into like the Freemasons or something. <laughs> yeah, you know, one of them uh, cloak and dagger groups. gay stuff. Is it gay stuff though? Well, I mean, I think you gotta do some gay stuff to get in. Like there's like you know, like a lot of like oh you're. In a room naked with guys around you, like your ass yeah, and, and stuff like that, like so awesome. <laughs> yeah, it makes it even better. Because I mean, that's the only way you can keep that a secret. Is like, is like, hey, everybody in this room sees everybody else's dick, so that we can't talk about all the the shit that we do. Isn't that what like frat guys do? Is just a bunch of gay stuff. That's wonderful. Yeah, there's a. Uh, at, least, at least some of them. There's a lot of uh, shenanigans going on. Mm, that to put it politely, I would say. Uh, 
sexual assault <laughs> would be what I would go with. But yeah, let's just say shenanigans. I don't know if I'd want to be in one of those groups if you have to do some kind of nefarious act on video to make sure you don't speak the secrets. Yeah. And then you got Alex Jones always snooping around. The gay frogs. The gay frogs. Yeah, I don't, I don't want that. To be fair, at least he's going to be really poor soon, so yeah. hopefully we won't have to hear from him anymore. Hopefully, yeah. Probably hear from him even more. Probably do a GoFundMe and raise $3 billion. Uh, anyway, we have a wonderful show thanks to Spencer Church. No, don't so, blame me. So if it sucks, yeah, blame him. Uh, we will check you after this space music, and uh, I guess I got to come up with a name for you. Yes. I don't feel like getting up. Maybe I can see it from here, but I wouldn't need darts in a map. I think that's a better system. Darts in a map to spin in a globe. Yeah. Or a bigger globe. Electronic globe. Yeah. See, I use the Google Earth, but then I always end up like too, too detailed. Too detailed. I can't handle that. But anyway, stick around, folks. You are listening to the Drug Pen Writing Podcast. I'm your host, Caleb James. With me today, Spencer, the Chechian Chicken Choker Church. It even goes with your name this time. Yeah. Chechian, yeah. Chechian, Chechian. Can't say that. Chechian from Czech. A sal- Isn't like that the Czech, Czech, like, like the Czech, like Czech Republican? Republican? Republic? Czech Republic? You're adding stuff. Let's just do a world history Chechia. It was, was it Czechoslovakia? <laughs> Czechoslovakia? No, probably not. I don't know. Is that where Borat's from? No, that's uh, <laughs> Kazakhstan. I have no, I don't know any details about Czechia. Czechi- I, I know I can't say it. C Z E C H I A. Czechia. It's not Czech Republic. That's a different, that's Czech. Mm. That used to be Czechoslovakia. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it's all the same. What the fuck? I, Eastern European history, I'm only recently learning because of the whole Ukraine debacle. And even then, I am not adequate at that knowledge. No. Can't pronounce anything. And, uh, yeah. I feel like when you get in that area, you almost kind of get, like, like the United States kind of feel, where you just have, like, a whole bunch of these, like, little places, like, just next to each other. Yeah, you have a lot of places. And then also, at some points, becomes, like, Euro-Asia or something. Like, you get Asian, like, Kazakhstan. It's, like, mm. Asian Europeans. I don't know. That's a weird... It's a weird like area that blends like Europe and Asia and other stuff. Well, the the east and the west have to meet somewhere, right? I guess. Uh, so your idea today was to talk about cancel culture again, more specifically, how the goddamn woke agenda is ruining fiction. No, classic fiction. Go woke, go broke. That was your exact word. Yeah, well, those it? were my exact words. I actually got those tattooed on my <laughs> chest. <laughs> on one boob, go woke. <laughs> yeah. The other one, go broke. Yeah. Uh, no, that, I don't think that was exactly what you had in mind, but you brought up something, and before we touch on that, this actually was going on a couple weeks ago when I saw in the news, and this might have been in England, not the U.S. I didn't see if your current debacle was in the U.S. or not, but the work of Rawald, again, I don't think I say his name either, because he's English. Why is it Rawald Dahl? Rawald Dahl. The guy did Charlie and the Chocolate, Willy Wonka. Oh, okay. Did Willy Wonka. He did James and the Giant Peach. Well, anyway, they're retroactively going back and censoring his work. So anytime he calls somebody fat or ugly or anything in the stories, they're taking that out or changing it. I brought that up because I thought that's stupid. They shouldn't do Mm -hmm. that. And then you mentioned to me today that they're doing the same thing with Ian Fleming's James Bond. They're rewriting the novels. I didn't look into detail of how many novels, all of them, some of them, the first one. Who knows? Somebody knows, I guess. Somebody wrote an article on it that you didn't read. Yeah. But I did look at a quick glance, and it said about the misogyny and the sexism and the way women are treated. And I would, because I don't think there's a harsh language in those books. No, really. Probably not. So mainly the sexist stuff is what they're changing, which means, unlike James and the Giant Peach, where they're just. Changing like insults and some of the words used, this sounds like it would actually be changing the narrative because you would think, yeah, like you know, there's whole sex scenes and things where James Bond treating women a certain way. If they're taking that out or changing it, I would imagine that's actually changing the story. That's why this is a rewrite and not censoring, which is way worse. Yeah, I kind of almost, I would almost rather it be censored, something be censored than rewritten. Yeah, if it's censored, 
that's usually done as like an abridged version for kids. Yeah, yeah, like something for school or... Or they've even done that for like we brought up religious people at the beginning. Uh, For religious people or you go to a Christian school, maybe they do want to read the Twilight series, but they need to cut out some of the sex and stuff. Okay. Uh, and again, I don't know if there's actually a lot of sex in Twilight. I have no idea. The movie sucks. Mm. Well, the book sucks. They all suck. It's all the same thing. Uh, so let's see. Rewriting James Bond. Offensive references to be removed from Ian Fleming's James Bond. 007 novels. Aw, oh, cookies. Damn it. All the cookies. No, Mr. Bond. I expect you to redacted. <laughs> oh, no. So they are rewriting these James Bond movies to accommodate 21st century sensitivities. That's oh, so dumb. Oh, man. That's bad. Uh, so they're going to be starting with Casino Royale, which is what we read, right? Yeah. The first James Bond novel. They're going to cut out the scene where he gets his ball smashed. Yeah. Because, like, uh, that's what I was thinking. We've only read the first one, but, like, I don't remember reading too much of that that would be needed to be, like, taken out. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't ever remember reading anything in that that, yeah. that I found, like, that would could be considered, like, super offensive or anything. Right. Well, here we're taking a look here at uh, Raw Dahl's work first. So... They're going to be changing things like instead of using the phrase enormously fat, they're just going to say enormous. That's, to, that's for like the Augustus Gloop and uh, Willy Wonka. Okay, this is an interesting one. They're going to be changing ugly to beastly. That sounds worse to me. Yeah, yeah right? Like, I would. Beastly? <laughs> I think he did Matilda too, and they were talking. Is that a book? And they're also going to be changing like Miss Trunchbull can't be described as like the mannish, crazy woman she is in that. Okay, so if you change enormously fat to just enormous, that's not too bad just because you wouldn't notice. Yeah. If that's you not did, changing if, the story. If, if you didn't know that they took the word fat out, it, yeah. you probably would. But though it also, it does change it because like he, you could be enormously fat, you could be enormously built, you could be enormously tall. Like, you, you mm. know, I just... Uh... James Bond, uh, specifically the novel Live and Let Die, has already been changed by U.S. publishers in the past. For instance, the N-word was replaced with black person or black man. And a whole segment, ooh, a whole segment, a whole segment describing a scented dialogue as straight Harlem, deep south with a lot of New York thrown in, was also removed. So they just took out all that, which I, that doesn't seem that's racist to me. That yeah. just sounds like... You described in an area in a certain time period. Yeah, where black people lived. I mean, is that would you say that about Jamaica? Like, would you say, oh, Kingston, and then just get rid of, like, you know, just get rid of Kingston because mm. black people? I don't know. That seems a little over the top. There's also a difference between Dahl's work and Ian Fleming's work where one's for adults, one's for children. Yeah. I almost get wanting to censor work for children just for, you know, the modern sensitivities or just because you don't want kids learning to call people fat and stuff mm. like that as an insult versus when you're already an adult and you're reading James Bond. Even if it's something as harsh as the N word, we're adults. You're saying yes. we can't handle reading that. Like, are we like that much of a pussy generation that we can't handle reading fictional work that has bad words? Well, this is like we've talked about before, like with um, like uh, with Tom Sawyer. Or was it Tom Sawyer or was it Huckleberry? Both, both. You know, having the N word used in there yeah. a lot and wanting to get it. But again, like you're saying that kind of more aimed towards children. children. Like, they could do a children's version without that. Yeah. would be fine. And then still keep the adult version, obviously. But somebody's... And here's another thing. If you're going into reading James Bond from the 50s, James Bond books, are you going to be that sensitive of a person? Right. Are you really going into that and you're going to be triggered by a word or a sexist remark or something? No, because that's, like, you already know what you're getting into. And I just don't like the idea of, like, there's a story that's written at a certain time period that takes place within that time period. And now you're just trying to make it seem like that stuff didn't happen. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's like, oh, we're just going to... We're just gonna erase that like it never happened. You didn't, we we didn't do or say those things. Like I find that more of a learning moment. Like if somebody's like reading a story that takes place during that time, and they're like, "Oh, well, this is what it was really like because this book was written during during yeah. that time." And to to take that away, I think is almost a, more of a hindrance, especially towards like the younger people who might not know. Well, where do you draw the line too? Because Okay, like Solomon Northup's Twelve Years a Slave. I haven't read that yet, but I would imagine the N word's going to be in I that. I would think it would be yes. Would they take that out? 
of a book about slavery written by a black man who was forced to be a slave even though mm-hmm. he was a free Northman. Like, that would be really fucked up, in my opinion. Now you're just erasing history. Like, you're trying to pretend it wasn't as bad as it was. Yeah. No. I think if it's a hus- in a historical context, these works, like Invisible Man, Native Son, 12 Years a Slave, even if you go with the Mark Twain stuff, like Huckleberry Finn, you have to leave that language in. Because if you don't, then that work is not showing the time period. And then anyone who reads that is going to get a watered-down version of that time period, which over time... Uh, you know, generations reading this and then they edit it more or whatever. Like, eventually people are like, oh, slavery wasn't even that bad, really. Yeah, yeah. You can't do that. And then that's how you repeat history. Mm-hmm. So if you have a Holocaust book and you want to erase some of the awful details of it so it's more palatable to modern readers, well, guess what? Over time, we might end up having another fucking Holocaust because people are like, yeah, it wasn't even that bad. Yeah. Like, you know, it will get in somebody's mind that it was an, a horrible atrocity that it was because... The everything they've read about it and everything they've heard about it was so watered down that it made it just seem like a mildly bad time. And what, just like another thing that's kind of, just kind of popped in my head whenever you brought up the uh, people who are going to go read like, you know, James Bond, like, are they going to easily be that offended? And like, so like what happened to like, you know, you wrote something either it's old or it's new. And if people didn't like it because of whatever reason, it just then won't sell or whatever. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? I could see like, oh, if you're going to do new James Bond movies, you might want to turn that da- turn it down a little bit because you don't, you know, with audiences and making the money and stuff like that. But like, I feel like with the books, it's like, I think it should just be that. And if somebody's like, you know, picks up the first James Bond book and is like super offended, then they're not going to read, read any of the other James Bond books. And, yeah. And if not, if the, you can just get past that and just look at it as the story or whatever it is, and want to read the other ones. And I also don't think that that makes you a bad person either. Yeah. I, I always, like, that's another thing I never understood, because we had this uh, discussion when we talked about, like, the red pill debate. Like, if you like Fight Club or The Matrix, yeah. you're right-wing conspiracy nut or something. And it's like, why can't you like something and not like the author? Yeah. Why can't you like, you know, why can't you enjoy the work of H.P. Lovecraft but think, oh, yeah, he was racist and yeah. I don't agree with that. Like, why do you, we can't separate the art from the artist? Especially it, ones that have been, like, long dead. Yeah, from like, a way different time period. It, it, it's it, one thing if you went into a modern writer who came out and they're always been a shit heel, yeah. and you're like, well, I'm going to support them anyway. Well, that, that's kind of like, to, for a more modern, isn't that uh, the guy who did the Ender Games that, like, um, oh, uh, I never uh, heard exactly what that guy was into. Is he, like, one of those? He, uh, like, he was, like, one of those, like, um, I don't know if he was completely anti-gay, but I know he was, like, against, like, gay marriage. Yeah. And so, like, I could see, like, okay, like, if you don't like... Well, J.K. Rowling's another one. Like, yeah, that's probably came the out against, one, yeah. Against trans people, and now everyone, like... You could still like the original Harry Potter stuff. Mm-hmm. You just could... She's a piece of shit, and if she writes new books, I'm not going to support them. That's fine. You still like the old stuff right. before she came out like that. It's a little different if, like, she from the get-go, she was like that, and everyone knew. Yeah. And then it was just, like, people read her books. Anyway, that's a little different. But, again, like, I knew the kind of, you know, philosophy uh, Yukio Mishima had, and I still read all his books because, and one, he's long dead, and two, it's like, well, I don't have to agree with the guy to like his work. And, or, and he also, I, it is helpful to get a different viewpoint. Yeah, it, I was just going to say to give to read somebody who has a different view on things that, like, even though that at the end you still might not agree with them, but you also might see something in a different way as well. Right. Well, let me read a couple more of these James Bond examples because yeah. there's uh, some lift like with the changes. There's some are listed here. So in the new version of Live and Let Die, Bond's assessment that would be African criminals in the gold and diamond trades are pretty law abiding chaps. I should have thought, except when they've drunk too much. That excerpt has been changed to pretty law abiding chaps. I should have thought. So he got rid of the part about them drinking because apparently there's a negative stereotype, at least when these books were written, that African-Americans, or I guess these were just Africans, though, black people drink a lot. See, you just reading that would have just been like, I thought anybody would be a decent bloke yeah. until they drank too much. Yeah. Oh, that, I think that's a lot of things, too. Like, I think you got to be careful because people who want to take that stuff out, I think, like, are you just looking too much into it? Like, Well, it's when you get to the point where you're so woke that you're being racist. Yeah. Which is, I think you mentioned that, I don't know if on the last podcast or just off air, but just, actually I think you sent me a reel or something about that, where somebody was going on about people are like so woke they're being racist. Yeah. Because they, they just like, 
uh, what was one example I gave before? Uh, the voter registration thing or something. You have to have a voter ID. Mm-hmm. They went around like Berkeley, California, where everyone's super liberal. And they asked all these white people, it was like, hey, what do you feel about, you know, voter ID? You have to have an ID to vote. And all of them said no, because black people generally don't have IDs. And I was like, mm-hmm. what? <laughs> yeah, like what? And then they asked black people and they were like, what are you talking? Like, what? Why wouldn't we have licenses? Why wouldn't we have IDs? Like, what? Or it goes like when we talk about submissions too, like the magazines. And it's like, oh, if you're like a person of color, you don't have to pay the fee. And it's like, you think they can't afford, afford a fee? fee? Yeah. Like, they need special help? Like, they suck and they need help. Like, what are you trying to say? You're being like a well-meaning racist. Yeah. Um, a polite racist. Yeah. Here's another one. Another original passage. Um, Bond can hear the audience panting and grunting like pigs at the trough. He felt his own hands gripping the tablecloth. His mouth was dry. The revision, as you imagine, removes the word pig. So now it just reads, Bond can sense the electric tension in the room. Oh, so he got rid of the whole panting and grunting, everything related to the pigs, the trough. I wonder, like... And it's also weird, like, reading those out of context. Yeah, what was the audience? It doesn't say, but why... They can't be grunting like pigs. Is it because they were fat? I'm guessing. I don't know. I don't know, man. Uh, but he just now changing it to Bond could sense the electric tension in the room. I mean, that actually reads better just because it's more to the point. But now you get rid of like the analogy. The here. style. Yeah. Uh, we have made changes to live and let die that he himself authorized. So Ian Fleming or the Ian Fleming publication statement continued following Ian's approach we looked at the instances of several racial terms across the books and removed a number of individual words or else swapped them. That's actually another point because uh, Neil Gaiman brought up like the people hating on his, uh, like the Sandman show and with like the supposed mm. race swapping. And when it's the creator who says, hey, this character could be black. Yeah. This character could do this. Or, hey, I wrote this in 1984. I don't believe that stuff now. I would like that change. Yeah. I don't want the N-word in my book I wrote in 1980. You know, like like if Stephen King went back and was like, I don't want the N-word in The Shining. Right. It's his book. I say, okay. Yeah. I mean, we could, uh, you know, the George Lucas effect, like, don't change the past, man. But, I mean, if he wants to, you can. If it's your art, I think you can change it. The audience might not like it, but that's that's a whole other matter. So if Ian Fleming was like, hey, change this shit, fine. Mm -hmm. Like, I'd be okay with it. It's it's when the guy's long dead and they're changing the work. I'm like, come on, man. Just leave it be. Yeah. That or if you want to have, like, you want to have, like, the original copies and then have, like, these watered down copies. Mm-hmm. But I feel like they're going to just change them and then just try to burn all the old ones. That's an issue that I'm that I don't like. Well, here's another thing we're getting into that's a little weird. So, apparently, they're very selective with what they've been changing in these uh, James Bond books. So they've been removing all the race stuff, right? Mm -hmm. They keep the rape. And they also keep a lot of other derogatory things. So here's some language that they have kept. Derogatory language has not been expunged, including calling homosexuality a stubborn disability. (laughs) Yeah. So in Goldfinger, there was this phrase used, and I guess they didn't change it or... Yeah, they didn't change it. Being like, uh, referring to Goldfinger, Goldfinger being like any other Korean rather lower than apes in the mammalian hierarchy. Oh, wow. It's a little rough. This one, though, this was a bad one. So they kept this one. The sweet tang of rape. They kept the sweet tang, tang of rape, rape. In, wow. the, in the James Bond one. All women love semi-rape. They also took that <laughs> and kept it, or they didn't take it, they kept it in the thing. All women love semi-rape. They love to be taken. It was his sweet brutality against my bruised body that made his act of love so piercingly wonderful. So they kept that. So it seems actually the violence against women is fine. Is fine. And uh, making fun of Asians and uh, homosexuals is fine. Just not. Are we at the point now where homosexual sounds like a slur? I mean, I feel like it's actually better. I feel like it's better just to say gay people now. But then, then how long? Until, but remember, you couldn't say gay there for a while. I know, but I think it's flipped because uh, just reading that out loud, like homosexual, that sounds like that's like racist. Yeah, or not ra- I mean that sounds uh, homophobic. It's how oh, man. It's so weird know. nowadays. It's it's so crazy trying to figure out what to say. Huh. We got another one. There's a lot of stuff, but I don't want to go through all those. Uh, you get the gist of it. Um, again, you could probably, if you want to find, I'm yeah. sure it wouldn't be hard to find out if you want to see more examples well when you have listeners so how you have raw dolls work getting censored or changed but it's just more things like the word fat and just like insulting words and stuff like that james bond actually has whole 
sentences or paragraphs or scenes taken out, removed, fixed, changed. And also they've kept things, like hypocritically, they've kept things that are worse. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't know. I don't know who makes the dec- That's another one. Who actually makes the decisions to change these? Like who gets the, the okay to change them? And then who like and who's hired to rewrite these? Yeah, I'm gonna say like not even then like not only who who gets who gives the green light, but then who's the one who's actually doing the changing? And also when these come out, do you get to buy the new one? It says oh the rewritten version, or do you yeah. just not know? Yeah, until you start reading. Or what if you never read it? You wouldn't know at all. Yeah, you wouldn't know what was changed, and if it didn't say so, now it's like I have to purposely go back and just buy the original. James Bond run. If, if you I, if you can. Yeah, or the closest printing that I can get that was original. That's another thing I worry about because there's a lot of work I haven't got to yet. And it's like, if I want to go back and read one of these authors, who's to say by the time I get the book, it's not changed? Yeah. Like, okay, even Lord of the Rings. I can see them changing some stuff in that. Uh, they did it with the show. You know, they changed history and the Lord of the Ring lore. Uh, I just, I don't like that stuff. I don't know. And like, if you have a Kindle... And it's digital. I could see them just changing the copy you already have. Yeah. And just updating it, and you wouldn't even know. You're like, I don't remember this phrase being right. used. Hey, where's all the N-words that were in this? Yeah. Huckleberry Finn sounds a little different without it. And then you just got, like, Happy Jim. <laughs> it's a, a very slippery slope. Yeah, I don't like using that, but it is. I don't think that they should be changing any work that's already been published. If you, like, write news stories. And have your censored bullshit in those. Like, you want to have a specific ideology? Write your own stories and do it. That's mm-hmm. fine. But don't don't take our our stuff that's already been printed, man. That again, like like I like I said a little bit earlier. Earlier, put a big sticker on, like, abridged. Yeah, this is like the the edited version, and then this is the original. But I feel like they just won't try to put out originals and like, you know, I think they'll just stop the original prints and just put out their new versions. And I don't like that. I don't agree with it. And if they're just doing like these two authors, like how many other authors are they doing or planning on doing? Right. There's a lot more, way more famous authors that I could imagine them going through their works. Do you think they would do that with literary fiction? Mm, do you I... think they would go back and be like, you know, that Hemingway was a little problematic with his view on women. Let's change it. <laughs> well, I was going to say, I think that'd be more of a, a question for you to answer because you've read more of that stuff of knowing if what's there that could be changed. Oh, there's a lot of stuff that could be changed in all those works. I think, though, that you probably have to have the estate sign off on the changes. They can't just change it. No. Unless the publisher owns all the rights to those works, they can't just change them. Uh, but again, if you have, you know... F. Scott Fitzgerald's great, 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 great grandson, who's super woke liberal. Mm. He's like, I like my great, great, great grandfather, but I don't like this goddamn language he's using. I'm changing it. I don't like the way he talked about women being drunk all the time. I'm changing it. Yeah, that's just, you know what it is? It's ugly. Yeah. It's beastly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's beastly. Beastly sounds worse than ugly. It does. It really does. Enormous sounds, well, I mean, enormously fat, I guess, is pretty bad, but that's also redundant, so I'm fine with that change. Uh, yeah, but then also too, like, and I know what you're saying, like, that would maybe make a little bit more sense because those are supposed to be, like, children's books. But, like, if you take that out, there's a less chance of that kid or any or adult, if they're reading it, to feel the way that the author wanted them to feel with, like, enormously fat. Yeah. You feel a certain way when you read enormously fat than if you read just a, And we don't know the context of that either. Maybe the person saying it's an asshole. Or, yeah. Like, we don't know. And think about, say, a movie like Sandlot, one of those great movies from our childhood about kids playing baseball. It was young adolescents. It was a great coming of age tale. And now they're going to go back and change that movie. I don't think they will just because it's a movie. It's hard to do. But I can imagine them. The the great phrase, you play like a girl. Oh, and then they get God, in their yeah. scuffle. It would be more like, you play like a girl. And then all of a sudden, there's this real shitty cut. It was like, God dang right I do. Yeah. And then they all walk hand in hand to the, I don't know. And that's all right. All righty then. And that's great. Girls should get paid the same Mm -hmm. as the guys do at baseball. Like, what the fuck? I don't don't want a world where they change Sandlot. I don't want them to go back and change all the Star Wars and take out all the goddamn lasers and make them walkie-talkies. I don't want it. (laughs) I don't want it. I don't need it. I think a better version of that would be the um, like the bad news bears. Like if they went and tried to like censor the bad news uh, bears. Yeah. What would be the? They would w- have the. They would have them win. 
What would be the worst? Yeah, they do that with Rocky one too. What would be? Or no, because he was fighting a black guy, so no, he has to lose harder. Yeah, harder, yeah. He did first round. <laughs> yeah, you can't have Italian beating up a black guy for thirteen rounds or whatever. What would be for you the worst movie or book they could? We'll start with movies. We'll do both. Oh. What would be the worst movie for them to censor in your opinion? Like oh. go back, and we're not talking about like this because I think you watch like the TBS ones. Yeah. Like, I don't, what was it like? Snakes on a plane. I watched the uh, TBS version. Of oh that. my god, it's, it's it was <laughs> terrible. I don't want to know. It's terrible, but it's almost great at the same time. Uh, something, something on this Monday through Friday plane. <laughs> like, yeah. What? Uh, yeah, it's funnier almost because it's so terrible. Mother lover. That that's like a you yeah. know. Hey, when they remove ass for butt. Right. That's the stupidest one. And like, what ass isn't even a swear word anymore. What I, what I don't get about those is like, what's this movie doing on this channel? But you like, you know, you would have to cut all this stuff out. Why is Lethal Weapon on TV? <laughs> Why is Kill Bill on TNT? Like, <laughs> it's stupid. For me, I can't have a specific example, but probably any Quentin Tarantino movie. Yeah, that yeah, that would not be a good. And I can imagine him getting heated, like if they tried to change it without his. Oh yeah, he'd probably stab somebody for real. Book wise, I mean, I'm just gonna have to go with like Huckleberry Finn. Yeah, I don't think he should change that because that seems to be the one that always wants to be changed the most. Because it is very uh, jarring when you read it, but it's also a very great story in my mm-hmm. opinion. It's like it was one of my favorite books I read last year, and I don't think they should censor because, like I said before, that is history. It's an ugly history, not a beastly history. It's ugly, and it should stay ugly because if you make it, try to pretty it up, take away the the harsh words, round the cornered edges. What do you get? You get this watered down work that's inoffensive in every way, and then it's just like fucking you know, guy and a kid going down the goddamn Mississippi. Uh, like I, I'm oh, I am I- interested like to know what the like curriculum is for like schools nowadays. I'm sure they just don't teach that stuff. Like, you know, or but just like any of like that like do they talk about like do they even like try to cover World War Two? Like we can't we can't you know, we don't want to talk about that. Like when I was in school we barely learned about slavery. Yeah. From what I remember. Honestly, I remember learning more about the Revolutionary War than anything. And maybe like the world, uh, the War of eighteen twelve. I learned right, way more yeah. than the Civil War. Yeah, it's like the Civil War was really watered down. Like they didn't teach us very much. We just, just like, North versus South. Yeah, and we like and there was like these people that were called slaves, and it wasn't a good time for anybody. It's like oh, okay, I could say honestly, I didn't learn in my whole career of school. Never learned about World War One. I, I don't think. No, no one always gets. It wasn't until I was, over. you know, it wasn't until I was an adult that I even knew like who all fought in the war. Yeah, like, I didn't even know what the war was about. Uh, World War Two, we learned somewhat about it, but it was very American centric. We just learned about like our history, mm-hmm. and I don't remember learning about the atomic bomb really. I don't remember us, you know, in school. Like, and then we oh yeah, oh the yeah, Japanese we... twice. No, it was <laughs> just like and then we did something to win the war, and everyone cheered. <laughs> oh, okay, the Japanese cheered. The Japanese that we put in internment camps, you remember yeah. that? Oh, yeah. We had concentration camps, but we don't talk about that. Nope. Don't learn about that in school. Mm-mm. Uh, also, the Asians built the railroads pretty much for slave labor. Yeah. Don't talk about that either. A lot uh, of them died. Yep. A lot of everybody died. It was a bad time for everybody but white men, and even them didn't have the best of times. <laughs> no. No. It was Basically, back then, it was like, did you have money? No. Well, fuck you, Dan. You're dead. <laughs> You're well, I mean, and, and, and in that instance, a lot of things haven't changed. <laughs> no, no, they have not. It's just a little bit more equal opportunity of who could get the money. What the fuck did we learn in school in history? I oh, do man, remember- history, history was bad for me because the teachers that I always had were not good. Not good. The only thing I remember is in high school we did Grapes of Wrath, and maybe that was because that yeah. was the only thing I liked. Right, yeah. But that was, like, the only thing I really remember. And then, like I said, I remember in, like, elementary school, we did the Revolutionary War every year for, like, five years for some reason. You know what I remember from school? Packets. I remember packets, and I remember reading the fucking uh, Red Badge of Courage. I don't even know what that was about. I still don't because I hated it. I read the whole thing in one sitting because I just want to be done. That's how I used to do my book reports. Mm -hmm. I'd go home and just read the whole book and be done with it because I was like, I don't want to do this for a month. Right, (laughs) We, the Fern Gully, that was stupid from what I remember. It was all like stupid pilgrim fucking light, little house on the prairie shit I remember like in school. I don't remember learning any black history. 
Or just anybody that wasn't white. I didn't, that's all we learned was white history, really. Well, they would they they would touch upon it a little bit during February. Martin like, Luther King, like they like they Rosa always Parks, do. The, the, the two, you yeah. Know, if if you were really lucky, if you were really lucky, you might have got a Frederick Frederick Douglass in there. Mm-hmm. But that was rare, and that was probably towards high school. And now, if you get live in like Florida, they or Texas, it's just like you don't learn yeah. about it. it's the same. Worse probably because now you're getting. You probably don't learn about Northern history. Either. No. <laughs> the Civil War was won by the South in 1859, believe it or not. Yeah. But them goddamn Yanks just wouldn't accept it. And then, guess what? So Abe just, Link, you know we, what Abe Lincoln did? Cheated. Cheated. He cheated. He didn't actually win the election. I don't know if you knew that, Spencer. Cheated. Cheated? Cheated. It was a, it was a false election. What, what, mail, mail-in, that mail-in ballot? Is yeah. That the, how he won? The fucking, you know, what was it? The Pony mm-hmm. uh, Express? Goddamn Pony Express. They just, all, all of a sudden, at midnight... All, you know, Philadelphia, all these fucking <laughs> ballots came in. <laughs> these stupid fucks. You fucking idiots. You fucking goddamn fucking stupid fucking motherfucking morons, you fucks. Sorry. That that gets my go. It's like, come on. Okay. If I could talk about modern politics for a moment, <laughs> if you don't mind. <laughs> Why not? Here's my whole thing, because it's called critical thinking, common yeah. sense thinking. You cannot say the Democrats are the stupidest dumbest party that ever existed you can't say they're complete fucking morons but then they also have the capacity the mental ingenuity to fix a fucking election that has 82 million people voting for their person right like yeah what are they are they are they idiots or are they gene mastermind genius masterminds one of the biggest densest population countries in the world and you think that the one side can fix it but then the Republicans who are super smart got cheated and they cannot like they can't the, prove it. Can't prove it. And every, and every one of them said except for Trump said, "No, nah, actually that was bullshit. That was all bullshit." They didn't go to jail for some reason for lying, but you know, we just made it up. It was no, no fixed election. But then people still were like, "It was fixed." And it's like every election now is fixed, right? That's what they say. Yeah. And it's like, "Well, if every election's fixed, then why don't you guys fix it better? Yeah, like, why are you doing so such a bad job? Huh? Yeah, what are you fucking around and doing? You guys aren't doing a good job of playing the game. Uh, I just don't like the stupidity. It's like, you know, like the COVID shit. It's like there's this giant cabal, worldwide cabal. That Like, how do you think all these people are able to plan this and keep it a secret? Yeah. How do we think that all these world governments, every no, you don't have one guy that's just like, I'm going to tell the truth. Mm-hmm. Like. Like, oh, it came from a lab in Wuhan. Not one guy was like, yeah, it did. I yeah. saw it. Like, nobody. It's like, I don't understand why when it comes to any bullshit that's worldwide, the earth is flat. Who the fuck says the earth is flat? Like, why? Why would you believe the earth is flat? Do you really think everyone in the world, every scientist, every government employee, every single is one wrong. of them is lying to is you? Wrong. Not wrong. They're lying to you. Yeah, they're lying. Because why would they lie? What, what, what would be the, the benefit? Fun? Yeah, what's the benefit of being like... Yeah, you know, we have been for the past like couple hundred years been lying about how the the earth, you know, it the is actually it. it is actually flat. Like what's the purpose of that? Like why? Yeah, what what is it? I just, what do you gain? We never get an end goal for these people. What is their end goal? If they are saying the earth is flat and not one person was able to squeal. Like nobody has any tell me out of all those people who have the guard cuz it's going to be guys like us yeah. that are guarding the flat earth border. Mm-hmm. In Antarctica or wherever, you know, where the Earth falls off into infinity. You don't, if you're assuming space is real, I don't know. If yeah, I mean, they, they, but we're sitting there. You're telling not one of the, these kind of people are, who are getting paid minimum wage and be like, you know what? Actually, it's flat. And I'm going to take a video on my phone. Like, yeah. no, nobody speaks. Nobody has proof. And it's fucking stupid. But all the people, you know, that are, you know, space station sending constant live streams of the Earth spinning and moving, that's all CGI. My, the the great ones are always like whenever like you know you see like a real and a guy's like I forget like how I did but like you know if you set up these couple like like holes with like on these slits and you'd be able to see and it didn't even through, work yeah like he's like no if it was if it was round you wouldn't be able to see and it'd be like and then you see like how whichever way you said that it wouldn't be able to do it actually did that he's just, oh well uh because of like. It just, I, God damn you guys! I don't, I don't like those people. I've been on mountains, Spencer. I've been on top of fairly tall mountains, and guess what? You can't see China. Yeah, you can't see that far because there's a horizon. But maybe if you had the best telescope ever, you could see. Like, mm. People wouldn't do that. 
Yeah, You're right. You're telling me people wouldn't do that. <laughs> people would go on the top of the fucking Empire State Building with the world's best telescope that you can afford. And just look. And look to see how far it goes. No, nobody would do that. Because, you know, it's, it's impossible. You know, we, uh, we, we bash on the school system a lot. But could you imagine teachers nowadays oh. having to deal with that? And, like, the kids' parents... For that are either do, doing that stuff or preaching whatever the crazy left stuff is and just having to fucking handle that. Dude, when uh, COVID was real bad, the redneck school in the area, which I will not name, we uh, listened to their teacher. They, you can listen on your phone to their meet, like the PA meeting. Yeah. Is that what it is, PA? Uh, uh, PTA. PTA meeting, yeah. You know, the the big thing was like you know, having kids wearing masks and stuff and getting or having vaccinations, stuff, whatever the fuck they're arguing about. But there was one guy that just went on and on about Jesus. And he went like hard Jesus, like deep Jesus. Like, is it, was that like down in Florida? No, it's in it's fucking. Oh, right. oh, yeah, you said it around here. Yeah, yeah. He, uh, so anyway, this guy gives his big, stupid fucking spiel. I'm talking about miracle Jesus, you know, blood to wine Jesus, uh, water all, water to wine. Yeah, I like wa- to think of blood because it's more metal. Yeah. I'd rather him cut someone open and fucking wine. God. Wine comes out there. <laughs> no, that's out their jugular. awesome. He could do it. He's magic. <laughs> um, no, water to wine and creating bread out of nothing and fish out of his ass or whatever he does. But it was like that kind of guy. And he was just going on and on about that. And at the end, everyone fucking, yeah, fucking right. And I'm just like, these are the people that are voting on the rules for the school. This guy was apparently the ex-president of whatever meeting bullshit. I'm just like, there is no criteria to run for anything no. anymore. You could just believe anything and get into any kind of office as long as you get enough followers. So I think I'm going to become a grifter. Yeah. And I think that's what you should do as well. All right. I like um, it so far. We'll start, we'll start small. Cult. Yes. Just cult. Try to keep it a sexless cult for a little bit. Well, I mean, that's when it gets creepy. And also, you're married, so that could cause some issues. But I could be quadruple married. Yeah, but I don't know how the original would feel about that. Have you ever noticed that those guys that do that always get like the women? When you look at the women, you're like, mm. and then you look at the guy, and you're like, mm. <laughs> and then you're like, these are all fucking. <laughs> yeah. like, Why? Because <laughs> nobody else will fuck was either that, one of them. Was that their goal when they started this doomsday cult? Was just so everyone can fuck each other and then die? Like that seems. Well, no, it's not so everybody can fuck each other, so the leaders can fuck everybody else's wife. That's what. That's the goal. That just seems like once you get in that position of power, the guy's like, wait, these people believe anything I say. I wonder. (laughs) Yeah. And then that's naturally where that leads. And then once you have a taste of that power, you can't go back. No, you got to fuck everybody's wives. But then it always goes into kids. Always. Always is like, well, she's only 13, but if she wants to go to space heaven or Mars or what's the Haley's Cop, Haley's Bop Comet, whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah. Haley's Comet called i forget what that was called they're the ones with the sneakers right and the kool-aid right wasn't those like the original like kool-aid like yeah they drank the kool-aid what happens if one guy just didn't drink the kool-aid like what if he was taking a piss while he drank the kool-aid mm. and he came back and like mm, <laughs> i don't know about this <laughs> yeah in hindsight this does not seem like the best of moves if any one of them again with the critical thinking like if i was in that doomsday cult and it's like this Cult's getting kind of weird it just started off we were just like smoking weed and you know sitting around fires but now it's getting a little weird I'd be like, I'm going to let them drink the Kool-Aid. I'm going to fake drink the Kool-Aid. Oh, I'm dead, too. <laughs> and then I look around, and I'm like, all right, is this spaceship actually coming? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to wait. And if it comes, I'll hurry up and drink the Kool-Aid, yeah. you know, or shoot myself or something. But if it's not coming, I'm like, well, those guys fucking, they fucked up. There is a little bit of appeal to the cult, though. Like, but what would you want to do? Do you want to be the cult leader? Because then you have all the power, but you also have responsibility. I want to be like the cult leader's like second or third hand man. Yeah. So you don't like want to be the follower necessarily. No, but you. But I want. You want to be like in the cabinet, though. You want to be you. You want to be one of the higher ups that that like maybe is actually running it behind the scenes. But mm. you just you got the you got the leader taking all the, the Dick heat. Cheney of uh, yeah. cults. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know how we got on this topic. So. Do not censor James Bond. Yes. Is that where we're at? Or sex cults will happen. (laughs) Or sex cults will happen. I'm surprised we don't have more sex cults in this day and age. Maybe that's why COVID came about. They didn't want sex cults forming, because that's where we're headed. So anyway, Spencer, if you want to check out our work, where do you go? You go to DPW Podcast. Yep. On Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Instagram, YouTube. Uh, you can follow my work at calebjamesk.com. I just got another rejection today. Yay. Woo. 
That was the pen review. Generic one, too. Uh, Ooh, and it didn't even go to my main email. It went to my priority did, email. So, did, or my, uh, what was it? The uh, promote, not promotion. What is that called, Spencer? I don't know. Well, let me look. What about if they were like, dear Kurt, we don't. Dear Kurt. <laughs> like, God damn it, do Kurt you Who yeah. are these people? Yeah, it went into my promotions email where just like pretty much the junk oh, part yeah. of the Google, whatever. So, yeah, that was disappointing, but I have a bunch of other stuff out there. I also submitted to some my newest story that I wrote that I really like. I submitted to some top tier journals. Ooh. I got an international one I submitted to, my first. And then three other uh, very highly esteemed ones. And one of them I even paid $10 for the extra uh, expedited uh, return or response. So it's already uh, been assigned to someone. So hopefully I hear back from that soon. I have a good feeling it's going to land somewhere. I don't know if it'll land with one of those just because I don't have the credentials that, you know, yeah. talking about what, like, people want while they also want you to be published already. And these, it's like, they want you to be published in high-end journals before they publish you. It's like, high, I'm high uh, yeah, journal. that's always the... Uh... So that fucking stupid circle jerk there. But uh, if those don't accept me, I know it'll get accepted in a smaller journal, but those ones pay, so I want to get paid. Mm-hmm. I want to make some money. Some moolah. Uh, anyway, uh, oh, you're only fans, Spencer, where were you, the Chechen chicken choker? Yes. Church. Yes. And you're going to actually be choking chickens, or is we it- We have to tune in to find out, folks. Is it a different kind it might, of chicken? Might be a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. Is your grasp that <laughs> grippy and tight? No comment. Uh, so we thank you for listening this long. This is probably going to be a DBS episode, and next week we will return with a normal episode. Probably not. Probably not. Uh, anyway, thank you for listening and rate us on uh, not iTunes, uh, Apple Podcasts. That's the thing now. I heard. Mm. Uh, so rate us, give us good review on Apple Podcasts or something, so we can get in the algorithm and comment, say hi, and we'll check you next time.